glazing. We're going to talk about glazing today and we're going to talk about several things with glazing starting with preparation and ending with cleanup. For preparation, there are some things you need to be aware of with glazes. Glazes are toxic in their liquid state, toxic to your body if you would swallow them. So I want you to be aware that as you're working with them, you're going to get some on your hands. That's the way it goes, but you want to make sure that you're going to wash your hands off with soap and water when you're done. And you don't want to be doing things like eating while you're doing the glazing process. To glaze, you want to start out by preparing your area. And because of the dangers of glaze, I do like you to put down fresh newspaper. And when you're done, I want this newspaper to go into the garbage can. Don't put it back into the recycle bin. Uh, as we're looking at colors of glaze, something to be aware of is that the actual color of the liquid glaze that you're going to put on your product is going to change significantly when it is heated up in the kiln. So for instance, I have picked out the color creamy caramel right here. And this is an example of a glazed piece of creamy caramel. And you'll see it has some beautiful drips and some gold colors, browns, some sort of greens and blue tones in it. But when I look at the actual glaze itself, the glaze looks very, very gray, very dull gray. It, it's not near as interesting as it's going to come out once it's fired to over 2,000 degrees. So that's something to be aware of. We have several glaze samples that are in here, so you can find any of these colors and say, well, what color is this or that? You'll find the answer somewhere on it. So for instance, this one here says Copperhead, written on the bottom. This is an example of a pot that's been glazed with Copperhead. You might see some differences, and sometimes that just happens in the firing process as they're heated up, but they'll be very close to the colors that you see inside here and each one will have the name somewhere on the sample. When you get your glaze, you're going to go to the glaze cart, find the bucket that has the name on it. So for example, this says creamy caramel. Should be written on there several different spots. I try to write it all the way around. You're going to find your glaze, take the lid off, and get a ladle, and you're going to need to mix it up thoroughly. The glazes settle as they sit and sometimes they're used the day before and sometimes they're not used for three or four weeks or more so they may become very um, very uh, very settled to the bottom as you mix it up you're mixing the particles of glaze into the liquid you want to get it a nice even consistency and I would say the consistency of a light cream you don't want it to be heavy and thick like a gravy if it is too thick, you want to check with the teacher and um, have a little bit of water added to it, but only the teacher should do that so we're not all just mixing the glazes. So as I'm mixing this up, I'm getting a nice, even consistency. And I'm going to get my, my pot, whatever I've made, whether it's a, a hand-building piece or something on the wheel. This one was made on the wheel. I'm going to get my pot, and the first thing I'm going to do is clean the surface of the pot with a light, wet sponge. The reason we do that is as we touch it, we have oils in our hands, and sometimes we'll be holding it, maybe have some hand lotion on, and we'll get a spot on there and we'll glaze it, and for some reason the glaze won't stick to that spot. So I would go over to the sink, take my sponge, I don't want it to be real wet, just damp. So I've, I've wrung the water out of there. I'm going to do a real quick wipe of this. It doesn't have to be super thorough, but I just want to get all the surfaces lightly cleaned. And this will dry really quickly. And then I'm ready to glaze. The first method I'm going to show you is dipping. When we dip our glazes, the piece has to be small enough to fit inside of the pot. Again, I'm mixing this up slightly. And I'm going to take my piece and I'm going to start out by dipping this one. So I'll hold it in one hand, I'll take it and submerge a portion of it, 
hold it in there for maybe three to five seconds, take it out, kind of rotate it a little bit to get less dripping, although there will be some, and then that piece is done. With dipping, you need to dip it one layer. If you do too many layers, things can happen where the glazes begin to run down as they're in the kiln. Sometimes they'll run down far enough that they stick to the bottom of the kiln and your piece basically has to be chipped out to get it out of the kiln. So this piece has a little bit too many layers. You can see it's running down. Although the glaze might still be pretty at the top, it ends up being a little bit crooked as it sits. Another method is uh, painting it on. So with this method, I'm getting one of my brushes that is nice and clean on the glaze cart. And with painting it on, I want to do two layers. So after making sure my glaze is mixed up, I'm going to take the brush and put it over here nice and smoothly. I'm going to put it in the inside. With painting, you'll want to let that first layer dry and then I would give it a second layer. It goes on a little bit thinner when you paint it. As this begins to dry, we're going to talk about cleanup. As you look at the bottom of this pot, you can see that from the dipping process, I got a lot of glaze on the bottom, and even from the painting process, I got a little bit of glaze right there as well. I could not fire this because it will, as the glaze heats up, it melts, it'll stick to the bottom of the kiln, and it won't come out again. So we need to clean the glaze off the bottom, like this piece was done, and even up about a quarter of an inch. So you can see on this piece that the bottom is cleaned, it's cleaned up about a quarter inch. On this lid that fits inside of here, you can see that the bottom is cleaned. Now because this goes inside, there can be glaze on that part. So I'm going to take this piece over to the sink and show you the easiest and best way to clean it, and it'll clean it about a quarter inch up the side. Taking a sponge, just a regular sponge, I'm going to saturate it with water, and then I'm going to take my piece onto the sponge and just push down and kind of rub it around in a circle. And as I lift it up, you can see that it cleaned it up about a quarter inch and it cleaned the bottom thoroughly. This piece can go right in the kiln like this. It'll come out, it shouldn't run too far. Another thing about cleanup is the next person that wants to use the tools wants very nice clean tools. So you'll want to make sure that you put the lid on the bucket and that you put the bucket back onto the cart. And just for safety's sake, don't stack them three high because they tend to tip over that way. So you want to only stack them up to two high. So I'm going to put this one down on the bottom. Tools need to be cleaned up, so I'm going to go to the sink. I'm going to wash out my tools, cleaning the brush out thoroughly. Cleaning the glaze off the ladle so it doesn't mix into the next person's glaze. I want to make sure I get these back onto the cart in the right place. Always sticking my brushes bristle side up. Then I would wash my hands with soap and water. I would throw away the newspaper and clean up anything else. 